Hey everybody, about to get going, hanging out here, checking out what y'all are doing in the chat. Who was first today? Dane? Dane is first. How you doing, Dane? Martin Crockett is here. John H. Kingston III from Rockaway Park is here. We got Thomas for 343 Labs. Yes, it's an exciting show. At least I'm excited. Who else is in here? Absent. Absent is not absent. Absent is present. F-stop is back. Todelas is here. Haven't seen your name in a little while. Ine, greetings from Brazil. What's up? My, William Mind Readers is in the house. Future World Machines. I like this new thing of just going down the list of the chat before I actually get started. It gets it out of the way and you all start paying attention. Hey, is he going to say my name? All right. What else is going on here? Miles Kane. Hello from Trinidad and Tobago. That's amazing. I'm sorry to hear you're in COVID isolation, but hey, you're here with us right now. That's excellent. Hey, Bill. Nice to have you here. User, username, different Bill, different Bill. Not the Bill that I have on my show today, but Bill Bancroft. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Simple Sam, Lie Society, Will Joseph. I think that's everybody. It is time for me to say welcome to It's Always Techno Saturdays here on 343 TV, brought to you by 343 Labs Music Production School. How's it going, everybody? I feel like my caffeine just like, just hit me all at once. And that's why I started talking really intensely. Hi. So I'm really happy about the show today. I've got an old friend here with me. He's going to come on in just a moment and we're going to have fun talking about techno and synthesizers and stuff like that, which is pretty much what happens here every Saturday, as you know. And, uh, you know, 343 TV, we've got, we're on here every day. Um, Abe was on yesterday, kind of going through his uh, setup for uh, routing all his hardware into his machine and everything. And we're capturing a, a, a live, well, just capturing parts to arrange into a track. I believe he's going to get down to that next time. That was fun. I was watching from the wings. and. Um, all sorts of content that we cover here on 343 TV for you guys almost every day at one o'clock. Free and clear, right? And um, we've been doing this for a little while. We're building our community here. Our numbers are growing here on YouTube. We've got our Discord channel, which if you haven't joined already, I highly suggest that you do. There's plenty of interesting stuff going on there. We have sample challenges and other events, and you can get feedback on your tracks. And you know, it's a great way to be a little bit more of a, a part of what is going on with 343 Labs. And I don't know, we, we're teaching online, we're teaching in person, we're in Berlin, we're in New York, and um, we've got a bunch of courses starting in January. So, you know, if you've been thinking about it for a little while, you know, take a look, see what we have on offer. I do synthesis and sound design. I do Ableton Live. I do private lessons. Talking about maybe doing a mixing class too. Things are, things are changing. Things are moving forward. It's great. So um, as usual, we have a giveaway. Sometimes we don't, but usually we do. This time it's from Sound Toys. It's a, a plugin called Decapitator. It's one of the best saturators out there. I mean, it, it can be used for subtle warmth it can, and for you know, doing different types of tone of different you know, circuits. Um, you can really destroy things with it too. It's a good tool to have in your arsenal for, for mixing or for sound design. And uh, so that's a, you know, if you haven't signed up already for the giveaway, there's a link here in the chat. It should be pinned at the top. Definitely get your name in there. Give us your email. We'll give you a chance to win Decapitator. And um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers the, the business for the top of the hour. And we can bring in my good friend and associate, Known him for, for years, I think since the 90s. Let's everybody give it up for this Bill, not the other Bill, Bill Youngman. How's it going, Bill? Hello, hello. John, it's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. Um, yeah, feels so close yet so far. Greetings from chilly Berlin. Chilly. How are things in New York? Oh, actually unseasonably warm today, as you can see from my... Uh... <laughs> it's oh, warm in here. <laughs> you do have the... Uh... The green spiraling vortex behind you. Oh, that's so, uh, true. Yeah, I got the green screen and I can be anywhere I want. I should do that. I should have different locations behind me. <clears throat> it's not a bad idea. I get like a little Miami in there, a little Cleveland, you know, just mix it up a bit. I could put a picture. I've done this before, actually. I'll cover for Abe's stream and I'll put a picture of his studio behind me. So it looks like I'm actually there. 
just a nerdy little thing to do sometimes. Yeah. Well, we love nerding out. So uh, this is why I'm on the show. So thanks again for having me. And uh, yeah, it's been a, a long, a long road with you, long mission. And actually that spiraling design in the back reminds me of the uh, first record we did on Serotonin on your label back in, what was that, 96? The first it electro step. Oh my God. 96. Yeah, the first weirdo IDM kind of hybrid stoner experiments. Well, we uh, called it a, you called it electro step. It was kind of like you were making drum and bass and then you switched all the sounds over to like <clears throat> sort of crazy bleepy. Sorry, I'm, we're really getting lost in a vortex now. Uh, yeah, that was your, your idea. Sample the drum machines and the old synths, uh, you know, the old the Matrix 12, all the Oberheims, all the Roland stuff, and make little hits out of them in the sampler with our limited memory back then. And uh, yeah, because, you know, you had hard step and drum bass, tech step. I was right. like, hey, let's do it. Let's do electro step. Let's make a new little mini genre. So, uh, well, we did two EPs like that. But uh, right. yeah, you, you guided me. For the people out there, I can't see the comments right now because I'm talking. I'll look later. I'll relay um, any comments or questions to you. <clears throat> or any questions. But uh, yeah, I met John at SUNY Purchase University. It's a bit outside New York City. And he already finished at the time I started, and he was visiting an old friend. We ran into each other at the wee hours. I played him a cassette of my weird experimental hybrid nerdy music, and uh, the rest is history. And then we did the... Uh, did my first record on John's serotonin label, so you've always uh, had a close piece to my heart, brother Selway. So, <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Yeah, no, it's cool. You're like, like you were even like you you even were a roommate in my old apartment for a little while. Like, correct for the better part of a year in, in the LES. That was uh, and, and I think that was right before <laughs> you decided to like make that big change and move over and see what was going on in Berlin. Well, if I, I did correctly. Yeah, well, the whole time you were saying, you and everyone else was like, hey, Bill, you got to go to Germany, to Berlin. I was like, how do I go there? <laughs> You're like, someone will bring you there. You're talented, someone will bring you. I was like, nah, you know, whatever. I'm just going to uh, kind of, uh, you know, ride it out and see what happens. But then I got a random email from a random person who became a very dear friend who bought me out to do a tour in 2001. After the first week in Berlin, I was like, I love it here. It's amazing. I could kind of live off my music. And uh, yeah, decided to stay. So it's it's been a couple of years, to be honest. And uh, I was here since the early days before the uh, maybe the influx of uh, DJs. Yeah, I would say so, uh, you were on the early side of this kind of American <coughs> techno. Excuse me. Uh, you know, what's the word? Exodus. I don't know. There was just a point where people just started going works. over more and more. And. Uh, I would say, okay, yeah, diaspora, first, it was like a yeah. diaspora of like American techno producers and DJs who like went to Berlin as a, to make that a new home base because, you know, Europe has always been strong for techno, like at a time when it wasn't here, now it's different. Everything's different. But like at that time, if you wanted to make a living as a techno DJ and you weren't already an A-lister and you weren't already traveling around the world, it it's so, you know. I, in, the, in, in the United States, you got to be somewhere like New York City to be connected and to do things, but it's so yeah, expensive yeah. to live in New York. And then, or if, if you move to a place that's not expensive to live in, you're kind of less, you're outside of the scene a little bit and you're a little bit more isolated. And if you want to be somewhere where everything is happening, music and art and culture, you know, there was a point where Berlin was like the place to go to like live a good quality of life and have access to like this expanding kind of global techno scene. So yeah, yeah I you, mean, you it, were right in the beginning of that wave. I can't, I was, I think we excuse me. I want to say, mean, it's, uh, kinda, like who, it's kind of Richie still Houghton went early, you know, Dan Bell yeah. went early. Those guys were like at the beginning and, and Bill Youngman, right? <laughs> Little old Bill. Yeah. I think Dan Bell was one of the first expats I met here. I was like, right. what are you doing out here? You know, kind of the same reasons, but uh, you know, compared to, it wasn't a money thing. It's like a also quality of life thing back then. Right. I mean, be able to live cheap and eat and drink good and meet nice open people. It was just a different vibe. Totally. Uh, it still is. You know, it's still close to my heart. I still love it here. But um, you know, there's so much of everything these days. But you're back then. You couldn't really. You, in the U.S., you'd play a couple cities, and that was it. But you know. Mm. Uh, in recent years, there's so much going on in the U.S., and I, you know, love going back oh, to see a, friends yeah, and family. It's amazing you can now. Tack a gig onto it, then it's just the bonus. I mean, even all so, right, you know, COVID notwithstanding, for the last few years, the techno has become a much bigger thing in the United States. 
in terms of the numbers of people interested in those events and, yeah, and that and new artists that said, and new yeah. DJs and new labels and all of that. Like it's really grown a lot. Yeah. And I mean, all genres from like really weird, nerdy stuff to super commercial stuff. I mean, everything's in the U S so, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is a good home base, though. Berlin is, you know, it's smack dab in the middle of Europe. You know, it's an hour to Warsaw flight, mm -hmm. hour 45 to London, hour and a half to Amsterdam, almost two hours to Paris, roughly. So to get around to the gig circuit here, it's, you know, it's convenient. It's just weird yeah. to, be, you know, be in three countries on a weekend and, uh, yeah, get back home. And it didn't feel like it was so far away. <laughs> Speaking so, of gigs, uh, like, you know, you kind of made a name for yourself pretty quickly in Europe as a live, a, a live techno performer on your Correct. own and was, also uh, working with playing with and collaborating with Neil Anstrom. That's correct. Yeah. I met Neil. Uh, Neil's incredible. I met Neil in 97, I believe in New York. Mm -hmm. Neil's from Scott. For those of you who don't know Neil Anstrom, check out his music. He's a stalwart of bleepy techno, amazing UK techno. Uh, he did many great albums on Trezor. Um, and yeah, I used to go to the limelight parties back in Trezor in the uh, you know end of the '90s. I caught the tail end of it and would see like the likes of Christian Vogel play, Tobias Schmidt, Landstrom, etc. Right, you've been and, pretty uh, tight with those guys, I would say. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, everyone's kind of split sense, but uh, yeah, Neil, we started doing a collaboration. I did a record for him for his label called Scandinavia back right. in that was 1997. So uh, yeah, starting to feel. Look at the salt and pepper. Starting to feel a little old here. But, yeah, um, sometimes, you know, when I bring in people on this show that I've known for a long time, it, it kind of feels like, you know, like old techno guy show, like guys with beards and baseball caps, like when I, when I had um, Sync 24 on Phil. Like, it, it's sort well, of like is, that. <laughs> this is why I'm growing the hair. It's like one last chance at the fountain of youth. But, That's um, right. Actually, yeah. I got to put this up on the screen. Someone named Mac P. Is this someone you know? Says, wow, Bill has hair now. I think for what years up, you've been yeah. real, you know, Look close cut. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get my my Tony Hawk Houghton on, you know, let's yeah, see how right. that works out. But, but uh, nice. <clears throat> I didn't know I can grow hair the last year. So COVID, I got bored and I was like, I'm just, you know, sick of, uh, you know, we groom a little bit less when we're home alone, right? So uh, there you go. The hair, you let, you the let, miracle, let it grow. You. <laughs> the, the Chia Pet just started to work. So yeah, met Neil. Um, this is actually a, a good short story. I met Neil Landstrom at Satellite Records, Scott oh, Richmond's yeah. Satellite Records. Right. If people don't know that, I don't expect anyone to know that shop unless you I you're... might have mentioned it on the show because okay. I worked there for a long time. So it's come yeah, up. Yeah, so I did a short internship there and I quit after probably about three hours. It's probably the longest internship <laughs> I actually made through. That's funny. Um, if Frank, Frank Sanchez, if you're watching, you know what's up. So um, hi, guys. Uh, and hello, shouts to Karina and PJ and everyone. So um, check this out. Uh, Neil came in to play a show. I think it was actually at the limelight. He need, needed to borrow an Akai sampler, like an S1000 from Satellite. He walked in. I was like, oh, it's Neil Landstrom, because back then we didn't have internet. Right. So it was saw him in a magazine. I was like, is that the guy? You know, this big dude with his, with his sideburn chops. I was like, you, Neil? He's like, yeah. I'm like, can I send you a demo of my stuff? He scribbled his address on a piece of paper. Uh, Scotland. I was like, okay. So... Back at school, I mailed him a cassette to Scotland, and it was coincidentally he was moving to uh, New York a couple months later. So met up with his place in Smith Street in Brooklyn, and uh, made some jams and a uh, couple EPs came out of that, along with touring around Europe for a while. We did something called Youngman and Landstrom, right? And we also called it called it the Destroyers, and we did a bunch mm -hmm. of like really neat niche kind of wonky techno techno bouncing EPs, all live shows with a ton of hardware right that was know, the thing so, this uh, was definitely pre-laptop live shows we're talking about this was yeah. tons of gear all over the table heavy cases through the airport you know like oh, it was all, very geez. different <laughs> i mean uh, i still live shows but the gear has shrunk which i'm very sure. happy about i mean yeah and, you could uh, i've seen you show up at a gig with like a backpack and a handbag and like it's amazing what it sounds like yeah, you can fit four electrons in a in a backpack if you you know, and with cables and right. uh, yeah, if you're missing something, you run the Radio Shack and uh, find that RCA cable and you're good to go and bring a USB stick for backup. So there we go, easier times. Although I still I prefer to play live shows still for the expression side of right. things, but uh, yeah, but that was the that was the quick thing with Neil. Yeah, and then uh, what happened? Yeah, then I was you know hopping around in New York, lived with you for a while. Mm -hmm which was a, a pleasurable new experience. And uh, yeah, at some point I got an offer from a girl named 
Cora Schneider. She was a resident at uh, at Ostgut in Berlin before Berghain. So there was, you know, and back then, Marcel Deppen was resident. She was resident. She invited me to come play. I did my first gig at Ostgut in Berlin, which is like yeah. kind of legendary, I guess. It's I still have the flyer somewhere. Yeah, this is one of our one of our Youngman Landstrom. Yeah, ones. I decided to sneak so, uh, in some background <laughs> music a little bit. Now we can kind of warm things up. And I know oh, this was, I, I you like sent surprises. me some files. <laughs> you sent me some files of stuff you the la, your last releases. But since we were talking a little about a bit about you and uh, Landstrom, I figured I'd this is um, one from Snork. That's a, that's a I'm label, man. You, Snork is crazy. Yeah. Snork is a great label from from Gießen, from uh, like middle South Germany. Uh, a few friends run it. My friend Christian Schachter, he's keeps this music alive. This kind of wonky, right. bassy stuff. So uh, exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like it kind of went out of fashion for a while, but I think now it's definitely. I mean, for me, I've always been into it. Everything 360s, you know. Like, right now, there's like a big, yeah. there's like a hard techno wave, a hard trance kind of mixed wave, and right. it will go. Uh -oh. The wavy stuff will hasn't come back yet. The music but I think it totally will. turned you into like <laughs> I don't know what. Let's fix that. <laughs> yeah, when it does come back, I'm I'm there with bells on. I got my live show ready to go. You're ready. Um, I actually did uh, in Leipzig like last no right before COVID. I did an old school Bill Youngman set with the mic, with the MPC. I bought all the old gear out, the Access Virus synth, and. Uh, yeah, it was great. Same energy. Those people are just a few years older, but uh, <laughs> sure. they they bounced around like they used to. So That's super great. enjoyable. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, we I haven't should, heard um... this in ages. <laughs> a lot of these files have a uh, the drives have died with them. my the records though. I gotta digitize all these things again. Put them up sometime. Well, yeah. I mean, these were only available on vinyl, pretty much, right? Back then, yeah. Internet was so slow back then, so but Beatport was starting up. Might have them be some of you on Beatport. We'll see. Well, I think Snork has some stuff digitally. Like, like there's a Beatport link here in this YouTube video. So. Yeah, some cool. Stark records. Get get your wonky techno on, folks. Get some Snork. <laughs> and for Christian sure, and, and for happy. sure, um, oh, there comes the bass. That's that's all Neil. That heavy bass yeah. stuff. That's Neil. He's the master at that. I'm just making the hi hats. He does all the important stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, Neil was on Abe's show a little while back. That was cool to have him on. We were kind of doing the same thing that, that we're doing, just like hanging out and talking about music and stuff. And I mean, we can do this for days. So we yeah. could. We could just hang out and we could be here for hours listening to old tracks. Although we're we are going to move on. We're going to listen to some other stuff and we're getting to seeing what you're doing in your home studio there. Here, let's get back to this page. So. Let's see what's going on in the chat for a little bit. Yeah, we've got yeah. some nice comments. Simple Any Sam knows hellos. Neil Landstrom. Let Neil's a legend. William so Mind Readers way, love Spork. Yeah. And then there's, here's a question for you from Shelly Johansson. Curious, what gear are you using for live <laughs> sets now? Oh, well, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, Electron Octatrack is probably the main brain of things. Um, and the Electron Mono Machine, old but good. That sure. thing always comes out. And the access virus for built, I do a multitude of projects. Some of you know, some of you don't, but we're just talking about me today. Um, the access virus is still like my kind of go to 16 voice, uh, 16 part synth. Um, it's a joy to use. It's tactile. There's knobs on the, you know, everything's tactile. I prefer something that has a lot of features sure. that you can use live. Then, then bringing like four things that are redundant. So the virus, let me just grab it. It's right next to me. It's not plugged in. All right. Hey, you could even move. You have that remote camera, don't you? I do. <laughs> but I can also just, this one. So I have a, I share like a studio with friends in Berlin. It's not far from home, but in wintertime, I kind of, uh, get all the live gear home and be able to be home, be comfy, put the heat on and just kind of like rock out. So I have a little home setup, which you'll see today. But mm -hmm. this thing, I had the Access Virus A before it was A. It's just the red one. It's still in the sure. studio. It's missing the ears. It's all screwed up. Like this paint's all falling off. But this is the uh, C. Is the C, right? You, know, you gear knows. I have to look. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but uh, this thing's super, super cool. And you can do a whole set with this, just with this and a drum machine. You're you're laughing. You're having a good time. Great effects. Well, yeah, it's multi timbral. So, like, you could have lots of layers. reverb and stuff. Yeah. So do you that's find that it much... was stable? Like, is the is it is it the operating system on that thing stable? It is. Okay. But, <laughs> but... I, I I plugged it in today and the and it said uh it said battery low. So I'll have to swap the battery okay. soon. And I haven't. No, looked, I was just curious. If, if anyone knows where to get a new battery for a virus, uh, yeah, 
for the access virus, not for any uh, virus. No, I was just asking batteries. you because I had a student that was working on a live setup and he wanted to use a virus. And I think it was the other one. And he had a lot of issues getting it to work with his computer. Hmm. Oh. And, I mean, maybe it was, I don't know, maybe because he wasn't doing pure standalone, like because he was it's trying to do. Probably the TI, right? It has integration. Yeah, I've never used the TI, but. It. Electron has a similar thing with the with Overbridge, right? You know, for the anal analog four, I like I use that a lot too. I have one here at home. Uh, yeah, it seems to work well. I've never used the uh, total integration on the Access, but uh, mm -hmm. prefer to just run it through a desk, dirty, record it. The idea is good. Get the loop and turn the thing off. So got it. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I like that for a segue. So <clears throat> let's move on and uh, let's listen to it a wasn't... couple of a couple of the tracks that you sent me. We can just hang out here in my my live session here. It's so exciting yeah. to look at clips. Wow, and wow. Uh, love the, love the sky blue. One of my favorite colors. Isn't it lovely? It's almost Christmas. So these aren't the, the like newest newest tracks, right? These are kind of where you've left no, with, off as Bill Youngman in terms of techno, maybe. Or with Bill Youngman, I've been slow. I've been working on some scoring for some TV, some oh, sound awesome. design things and uh, a few other projects that some of you guys may may not know and not really ghost writing but uh i i'm always making music jamming doing odd things to get by berlin's great for that but these are kind of the last things i released on vinyl as bill youngman i've been working on a lot of new things so at next year bill youngman will return in a new form because i've done over the years over the 25 years i've been doing this so many things like little breakbeat things electro Kind of the wonky techno thing for a while, some more serious dark stuff, sure. droney stuff. So uh, I'm just trying to hone in on really what I'm trying to say right now in my life as I've okay. gotten older and maybe slightly matured or not. But um, it's, you know, as you have, John, too, you've made so many different brilliant things, but you made... You know, electro, well, I have like New ADD York, when it comes to genre. I just keep changing my mind. You made I feel house, like, you made trance, hard house, you know, like lately I'm a techno. little more focused. Like I'm really like I'm either working on electro on my own. Most of the stuff I've been making myself, like have all these unfinished sketches, which will eventually hopefully be on a record. Um it's been very electro focused. I just where I've been really enjoying getting back into that in the last couple of years. And then and of course, Jason and I were like once again trying to get serotonin records going. Like that's always been a thing. It's like we try. We're not. We're. Ter I'll be honest. We're terrible at running a label. We're just not. We're musicians. We're creative people. We're tech nerds. But like the business part and the marketing part of keeping a label going is like, I feel like it's, we need to hire someone else to do it work. or something. It is right. Yeah. We even tried to get you to do it for a little while. It was like, <clears> here, Bill, take I, serotonin and run with it. I and, don't have the talent for it. I don't have the knack <laughs> for it. Some some people kill it. I just. Yeah, I feel like can't do it like pa paperwork bureaucracy. Like I, my brain just shuts off. Like registering tracks funny. with Gamma, like all that stuff. It's oh, like it's such oh, a pain. Yeah, don't do so, any of that, and then you're wondering where's the money. But um, but then with, with you, music though, like I'm sorry, I just I I, I, I uh, yeah. derailed my own comment. But basically, I was saying I've been really focused on lecture recently, and then I still have this cl long time collaboration with Christian Smith, which is like you know pretty a little bit. I mean, it's not experimental, right? It's like party tracks it's big room techno and related genres and like you know we're all we're kind of we have our thing and we keep doing it and it's working still so that's what i've been, that, that's been my focus i've been much less scattered over the last few years stylistically well this is a good uh, i mean and on the contrary it's good to work with a friend too once you're involved yeah. with it so i'm up to do i love music all from death metal to hip-hop to techno like you know everything and if you're well, I know. With a I know this about you that you you can you can play a guitar. You can shred. I, this is, is this a been secret? Back into it a bit, but <laughs> no, it's not a secret. I, I mean, I studied classical guitar a bit. I had to audition to get into school, playing my experiments on tape and some guitar. But uh, I am I'm picking it up back slowly again. That's cool. But the thing of what you said important, John, and for you and for for you guys out there tuning in, like, um, it's it's okay to like a lot of some stuff and jump in between the day. I mean, that's part of being creative and being an artist. It's it's you don't have to sit there and say I have to do this one thing because I have a goal of getting known in this thing. Like I just do whatever I feel, and life just kind of falls into place. And uh, you know, so it's forcing yeah. something never really works. But it's it, it's good how you say that you're back to electro the roots because that's what you started is doing. Sure. You know, so it's one I'm of the things that inspired making, yeah. me in the beginning for sure. I'm going to yeah, put on one of these tracks. Let's see yeah. 
We, you got we it. can keep talking about whatever, but this one is uh, Levitate, and this is banging. <clears throat> this is Levitate on uh, Killer Kill Records, Berlin. My buddy That's... Nico put this out. I think it was... Yeah, just love getting into the sound design of things. Still do, so... Yeah, it's a lot heavy, of... The... Heavy duty. Currently, I think a lot of your sounds are expansive and cinematic and large. You know, they definitely have a... A sp there's space, right? I love reverb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who does it? Just just drench me in reverb. Throw me in the tub, put some reverb in there, some bubbles. I'm happy. Simple Sam, Sam says you should rebrand yourself as Bill Youngman the Elder. That is think? a wonderful idea. If I use that as a name, I will give you a... 5% of all Gima royalties that are registered. I well, like that, I like that I name though, I think you should Sam, have said like you. 0.5 or 0.05. <laughs> well, I probably won't get around to registering the tracks, but thank right. you, Sam, I love I love the idea. <laughs> yeah, this this track is big. And when I did, this is something I was trying to do for a long time, is make something that didn't have a melody that had like an evocative feel to it, and that was, Kind of the one time I captured it. <laughs> Hasn't happened since. Fluke. <laughs> what are like, what are you using? I'm just, do you remember like what you were using to make sounds at this point? I mean, this is a few years ago. For this session, uh, well, I use Native Instruments battery a ton. Can you still hear me? Because the music's loud. You can hear I'll me turn talking, it down right? Bit. Yeah, I okay. can hear you talking. All right, cool. I don't want to feel like I'm yelling. Um, yeah, I always use Native Battery. I worked at Native Instruments for a while, Native Instruments for a long time, like six years, a bunch of years back. And uh, I tested Battery 4 for so long that I started to use it as a sound design tool. So right. drums and percussion, all that, and any like modulating little small sound. And I use a lot of Absinthe for the sound design. Absinthe Right, we talked about that before. I mean, at one point I was going to ask you to do like an Absinthe <laughs> lesson or something, but we went a different way can, for today. But maybe another day we can do it. If we if we have like a five-hour show another time, we'll do that. It's a little, right. it takes real a little deep. time. But, absinthe is but, so deep. And they really should update it. It hasn't changed in years, basically. Like, <laughs> Well, that's why it's still good, because people don't want to yeah. use it, because the interface is like, you know, it's a bit quirky, but I still love it. But any tool works, but Absinthe, a little bit of reactor. This has some virus on it too. So I'll just chug through, make, a, make some kind of pulsy sequence, record it many different times at different yeah. octaves, adjust the sounds, and then paste, puzzle it back together so you have a good loop. So it's a lot of handwork till you go, hey, right. I like how that sounds. So no, and I know you, you definitely have yeah. a lot of like, you know, edit, resample, re record, process, chop. Oh. Paste, you know, like you know that stuff. Tons. So sometimes you just you just destroy the sound till it's you know unrecognizable, and you go, oh, let me just try tuning it down a few octaves, and then you're like, oh, that sounds weird, and you throw some cavernous sound delay on it or something, a or reverb, and limit it to death, and then all of a sudden you have some otherworldly sound, and it fits in the track. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I mean, one of these some tracks you mentioned, so I'm not, it was like. More a little. I mean, that I feel like that track was something you would hear at Berghain or something. But there's one track that had crazy bass, like insane bass. Which one is that that we listened to before? Do you remember one of the ones that was Ooh. mastered at uh, Dub Plates? Oh yeah, it's H H three. That's awesome oh from God. a Killer Kill. <clears throat> now that was done. Those kicks are made with a machine drum. I have the machine drum here, but those sure. I would because the machine drum has synthesis. It's one of the first. I don't know if it's one of the first, but it's a drum machine. You guys know the electronic machine drum. But is it, John, is it one of the first machines that had like a synthesis engine for drums, like intentionally? I mean, I mean, it's, it's, I think, it's, I mean, the machine on its own was kind of a new thing because it was like, yeah, sort of a DAW, sort of a drum machine, sort of a plug in host, sort of, you know, like it, it crosses boundaries. Right. I mean, in the machine room, kind of made minimal techno, like the minimal techno movement from like 2000. Oh wait, no, you're talking. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about machine. No, machine drum is definitely like the a machine modern, drum, yeah. modern drum synth. Yeah, I mean, it's a drum machine, yeah, but well, it, it it does it plays back samples and it has synth drum synth in it. Oh, well, now it's still modern. Tried. I would say like yeah, I would say yes. One, that yeah. was pretty groundbreaking. Yeah. So For since that it had was it had a drum a drum engine, you know, you can have extended, you know, sus endless sustain and release. So I make these kicks and sample them, put them in the computer, SSL, Waves, L3 limiter, and made the kicks and then put them in battery and then program the kicks in battery. So this is kind of how you get the 
the uh, you know the division in the notes of the uh, different different kicks. Right. So the kicks the kicks make a melody rolling bass line, and then the fuzz is uh, also a machine drum. Just any old fuzz um, through a filter, through a tremolator, whatever you have, uh, and then the uh, all those all that kind of like modulating reverb delay shit. That's done with a CSR reverb. I think it's IK Multimedia, CS. It I've doesn't never really used that. work on Mac anymore. Okay. But I go so in like, there and uh, you can assign. El they didn't it's update a, it's it. It's a plate. They didn't update it. It's, it's broken on my computer now, but all this stuff is, is a combination of the Sound Toys crystallizer and. Because you're giving way to the, the decapitator, right? Oh, that's the right. Crystallizer. Yeah, we, we got we to play with the de decapitator just for a sec, but. I wanted to put Let the me just finish this man. one Okay, comment. go ahead. Yeah. So it's that, and then the rest is just the reverb, and you can assign LFO to whatever you want to. So decay and length of reverb, and that's how you get these kind of digital, like kind of grinding, swelling sounds. It's just a reverb. You get it with any reverb. You change the time and the feedback at the same time, put them up. You get that kind of uh, tape, tape modulating pitch effect. Yeah, that's all. No, that, that sounds awesome. Comment. No, and in I, a nutshell, <laughs> I'd, love to, I'd love to see you do it. But you've got some other stuff going on today, and I'm, I put the spectrum analyzer because I listened to this earlier, and it it seemed to have so much low end, and there's like, you know, the loudest peaks of it are 45 hertz. Yeah, 45. Okay. 50, 60 hertz, but then there's this like these other peaks below that are They're not as loud sub, yeah but like that tw there's a lot of 20 hertz in this and that's the kind of stuff that you see in tutorials like oh you got to roll off all that stuff and that's not always true and this isn't, the first, this isn't the first time i pointed this out but with this kind of techno sometimes you're if you do too much of the, the typical like how to mix an electronic dance music track tricks with like high pass filters and like stuff like that you, you lose the possibility to make this earth-shaking low-end that makes the whole club go crazy. Like, you can well, do it. You of, can, yeah. th that's the beauty of techno. You can do whatever you want. If it sounds as long cool, as sounds, you're yeah, great. As long as it sounds good, it's right. You know, I mean, it still has to be balanced system, to a point <laughs> to translate on the system. But Well, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, once you get past that point where you know the fundamentals, you can do some weird, weird stuff. Cool. No, I, I really like this track. I mean, it's... It's a, it's hypnotic. It's got this incredible bass. It's not overcomplicated. It's a really great atmosphere. It's even a little bit electro, a little bit. Kind of like my my homage to Surgeon. And it's you know, good. Good good the late '90s. My heroes. Cool. Kind of like uh, and so, also Berlin inspired. I made it early on in my Berlin time too. So. So we're gonna we're gonna jump over to your remote camera and your screen share and get into that. Okay. I just want to really quickly, cause since we were doing the, the giveaway with decapitator, I just, I just threw a beat down really fast. Just to listen to what the, uh, what the decapitator could do for us. And this is just all the drums. Look, I'm totally just nailing it. Like that's the kind of thing people don't ever do that. Don't you're not, you're never supposed to nail your game, but I don't care. It sounds awesome. So I like the sound of that. It's just like really making it brutal. I mean, without it, <laughs> just these light little quiet 909 samples, but that's, that's what you want, right? I, at least that's what I want right now with this 909 beat that I made. And then I added... just added that it's just weird FM sound and then decapitated the heck out of it and that could be the whole track probably that's just a playing whole track <laughs> Okay, enough of that. So in case you hadn't already entered to win the Decapitator, if you like techno and you like tough sounds, you probably want to pick this up at some point. I mean, you could use any distortion, right? It doesn't have to be this, but hey, give us your email. We'll give you a chance to win the Decapitator. Now, let's bring in, this is why we're here. This is, you know, in addition to hanging out and shooting the breeze and talking about our history and, you know, and where Bill's coming from and. 
this is this is where we're getting into. So Bill's got some new toys here for us to check out. Yeah, so uh this thing, this guy just oh, you can see my finger. Who this is the Solar 50 from Elta Music from Moscow. I just ordered it last week. Um it showed up yesterday. It's a weird drone machine. Um me and John as well and many of you gear nerds, all it does is drone. It's got 50 oscillators and uh each of oh the keys God. I don't think that's enough oscillators. <clears throat> well, they're like kind of like, you know, they're just like kind of sawtooth sounding oscillators. So there's right. a, in each of the 10 corresponding keys is like one block of five. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been sketching this little track here. So I worked on a track in Ableton a bit and realized, oh, the track needs like a bit more oomph, something lively to it. So um, if I play the little clip from Ableton, it's like this kind of like cinematic kind of electro thing. I recreated it in the gear I have here. So if I can just play a clip of this, um, I'll just let it roll for a sec. And if you can't hear it, do you hear that, John? Yep. So it's just like kind of a lot of chord layers, a little bit of battery, some beats, uh, some stop synths, always a lot of Valhalla reverb and whatever else, and a little bass line chord. So I recreated it and I'm, want to add some stuff from the solar 50 to that as well as the modular i have as well all right here so uh let's yeah, just so play just for a little roll. bit yeah i'll let this roll for a second nice. to get the idea and i can play you how it would sound off the gear because the gear gives it a little more shine and shimmer and more uh, element of surprise so i like to sketch in ableton first and then take one or two pieces of gear and recreate something and okay. just kind of screw it up a bit to make it a bit nastier and dirtier you know so so the um I was wondering what you were going to do with the absinthe that's doing the bass melody. That's just the bass, and if I solo that, it's just simple wave, a little bit of boot. All right, you got the SSL I mean, I, on SSL. there, compressor. You've got. And I love, I like, I love limiting for. I mean, I like to use a limiter as a as an instrument because if you do this, you get a cool yeah, yeah, sound. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, extreme do compression, that, but... extreme limiting. Like especially it's, high ratio with fast attack and release times, it becomes kind of like a wave shaper. It becomes like a clipper. Yeah, so you can use compressors with, and limiters yeah. to distort. That's a cool trick. Yeah, this is the whole thing with techno. I mean, anything you can do whatever you want. I mean, the bigger you make the big mess, and then you clean it up after. So sometimes just jam out a part, you and make, make it a super big noisy, mess and clean exactly. it up after. All right, I like that. And then keep the little parts you want. So uh, I mean, this is a pretty tame track compared. But, it's uh, not super banging, but it's it's intense. No, it's it's an idea and sketch, and I just thought we, uh, me and you talked yesterday about the stream, and I said I'll just pick something I'm working on and it's in a rough, rough stage. Right. So, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff's bounced the audio because of computer limitations, and the old days used to doing that, you know, just freeze and flatten in Ableton because we uh, run sure. out of memory. Uh, and then I guess there's some, I think there's, there's battery doing the work on some of the drums, and the drums are uh, usually have a... So you're still using battery? Still using battery, yeah. I mean, I bet you have a huge library of drum sounds that you like to use yeah. battery. Enough drums. I mean, but the Ableton stuff now they have uh, in the uh, the packs are really good, you know, so. But I like to shape things a little bit myself to make them my own, even if they're, you know, pre-made. Sure. But a lot of the stuff's just stuff I keep using over and over again. I have a 909 studio and an 808, so I'll sample those and okay. a bunch of other gear to design sounds with, you know. Take a sine wave, add a little bleep to something else, squash it together, put that in the sampler, then you have your your own creation. It feels good to do something cool. by yourself, although these days, you know, you get lazy and it's you find a good sound and you're trying to make the same thing, there's no reason to recreate the wheel, you know? It's well, sure. how you use it in your track, so <laughs> we yeah, all have access to the same stuff. I mean, you know, we're, we're thinking a little bit about sound design sort of conceptually today, but as producers, we don't have to make every sound all the time. So you no, can, it's completely. You know, well, it depends on you know what you what your goal is. What you're, yeah. But if, I like as hands on as possible to a certain point, you know. So. Sure. Well, let's yeah, so um, that's like, that's let's do idea. that. Let's get hands on and check out the the hardware. Yeah. So if I solo to this, let me see if this. I have to move something. One second. That's the drone. That's the big ambient machine going on right now. Yeah. Oh, he he's had he's moving. He's off. No, so he's off the set. Oh, here, here he's back. <laughs> Wait. Do you hear that? Yes. 
All right, so basically. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, over that track with the strings, I added some, because this thing is like, uh, if I take one oscillator here and add the others, I gotta move my mic. Hey, come here, Mike. Yeah, so. This thing's a pain in the butt to tune, everyone knows that. So it's a, got the filter. For sound design, this thing's really cool. We wanna be like, you know, kind of, you know, epic film stuff. This is great. It sounds so cool with some reverb on it. And, and then it adds, you know, some chords. Let that stay. You can hold now, as well, so I can hold all these. So and it'll just drone. You can just let it drone out. It's great for winter, great for meditation. Just sit here. Now, the effects, are they built in, or are you adding those on externally? All right, so the effect is is this little cartridge here. Whoa. And it, it's so in rush and cool, it comes with a booklet of little cartridges called weird things like uh, so you can change the function of the effects processor by switching out those little cards you swap the card and you hit the reset button and so let's try uh let's try the pitch shifter if uh -oh. i can get it out of the, the case is really small so we're going to stick with the cathedral because i like it okay for now so if i hit reset it would it would stop the effect and load the next thing so these are just droning out filter back up So basically that track I showed before, I don't want to feel like I'm yelling. It's so loud here. The track I showed <laughs> before, the idea, if I, <laughs> all good. Turn your headphones gonna be down. Spit. Like, Bill, this guy, is, he's so crazy, he keeps yelling the mic. Um, you just sound more like I, old man techno. If I start my thing and bring it up, I have a machine drum. Wait. What are you doing? If I get my cat, <laughs> I have a, it's a getting machine wild drum over, over here. here. I know, got the machine drum. And yeah, there we go. I think it went in vertical mode. Anyways, yeah, it did. <laughs> I want to see more of that big ambient machine. That thing are those trackballs? Now you still hear it, yes? Yeah, yeah. The high note that just came in, I think. Yeah. So, so did you hear me about what are those trackballs that I see? Those little round things on, on the, you, the big ambient machine? On the Solar 50? Yes, you, you can, uh, with them, you can change the pitch. The pitch will go down about like one semitone if you cover them. Huh. While, oh, while wait, so they're, so they're just sensors. Like you put your hand over it? Correct, yep. Yeah, oh, correct. wow. What is it sensing? Is it like electromagnetic? Is it light? Okay, Vangelis. <laughs> Let me get that back. Yeah, that's, it's a total. Hey, while we're getting epically like crazy soundtrack space vibe going on, I'm going to say congratulations to our winner this week, John H. Kingston III. You have won the Sound Toys Decapitator. Good job, pal. I think this is not the first time you have won something. You're so consistently in the chat that you, you've had so many opportunities to win, and now you finally got another one. Unless I'm mistaken, I'm pretty sure this is your second. So congratulations again. I'm just going to close my eyes and relax now. There's a little bit of machine drum coming in. Oh, my background's gone. I don't look cool anymore. Here, here we go. Hey, man. You're doing a good job. I mean, you just did this whole setup with the cameras and the, and, and the synths today, right? I'm just pulling legs. So here I can... So now the Erica, the modular, is doing the bass line, the deep one. All right. What's doing the pads? The analog ports behind my oh, okay. computer. Cool. Yeah. So I can, can we hear it without that, that for a second? Can we lose without the, the pads? pads? Yeah. Sure. Now I can Machines hear. I wouldn't because it was speed. it was loud. It was covering up the drums. So now I hear the the rawness, and I think I see what you mean by like 
you sketched out in Ableton Live using the plugins, right? Which are, gen while you can make them sound more aggressive and crazy, tend it, you know, when you generate sounds and mix in the box, it tends to be more clean and a little more stable. It sounds boxy. Yeah. Whereas now so you're, so case, you're, you're oh. sketching a musical idea out and now you've got your gear hooked up and you're recreating your, your melodic ideas and your rhythmic ideas with these instruments that are a little bit more full of character, a little bit more unpredictable, yeah. and you're finding just getting, new just getting energy. getting lost in it for a bit. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good process. Just getting lost in it. So I just replayed the notes and I have the, uh, the black sequencer and that's just going through some weird verb. And it has a little uh, joystick here I can like kind of warp out the, uh, so it kind of like shoves it down a bit and the delay for this little bleepy sound. It's some, kind of like that, the effect we were talking about earlier. I'll get, sure. get a little more volume on that one. I that like the modulation delay. in that sound. What's doing that? There's an LFO going. Okay, so from one of the oscillators, there's two outs. There's a sub out and a regular wave out going into a little mixer that's getting an LFO on it. LFO's going to the cutoff. So if I, I can... But there's sort of a glitchy thing that happens. That. Yep. That's going all through a delay. So... Using the joystick and the LFO so I can turn the LFO up full. Here, I'll do the... There we what? go. There we go. That's the that's, delay. That's what we want. We want that feedback. Yeah. And uh, baseline's on the Polyvox filter. Bill, do you use Erica stuff? I guess I do. This is the Erica system. Oh, sorry. I totally spaced out on the fact that you're using Erica. Do you have a favorite? That's a question from, for this, Shelley. from this unit? Yeah. Oh, I, I love the delay unit, actually, and the reverb in the Erica. I mean, I'm, a, I'm an effect guy. Simple. Delay, right. reverb, I'm happy. But uh, the Polyvox filter is really nice, too. Turn the resonance up, make it squelch a bit. Right. Always a winner. And on, and because the Polyvox filter is a Russian thing, I'm pretty sure, it's also on this Solar 50, this blue one. Oh, also right. So it has the same kind of... Whoa. That's loud compared to the other stuff. Sorry. There okay. we go, volume. What's the, the tuning I mean, I... of... What's the tuning of those those strips? Like, it's not chromatic, obviously. You have to tune them by hand. Each oh, right. set of five, five oscillators. Yeah, so... You, so you kind of go in and tune the oscillators to like a chord or a cluster of notes that works for your composition and then improvise. That's, that's what I did shortly before this uh, video right. chat today. One's horribly out of tune. One sec. And the cool thing with this is I guess you can also do some... Excuse the tuning, you can do some... Uh, you can just kind of play the thing, you know? Sure. Whoa. And I see if the it potential. was, you know, sounding, <laughs> sounding harmonious, you can do that over your track in, in free time. I mean, right. there's no MIDI on it. It accepts, you know, gate for each, uh, for each section, but do that in free time and have some cool, freaky stuff to go over your track that's just hand-played, because a lot of times you hear a track and you're like, what's that weird out of rhythm freaky sound? It could be, you know, anything you just play by hand. I think it's okay not to hard quantize everything, so. Yeah, I mean, it's e especially it's easiest with kind of these trippy ear candy sorts of things, but it's totally possible, even if you're doing, you know, dance floor music, like this is kind of going in a different direction, but you can still do out of unquantized, out of the, out of the, the time signature. Like it, it doesn't have to even be a time sig signature. It can just be spontaneously changing, and that no, like, that can work yeah. in amazing ways. So things are super cool when they roll in that way, and it's just like, sure. what the heck is that? You know, in our dance floor, you're like, what is that weird noise coming? In? It's out of time, but it's it feels right. So you That's go it. with it. You know, go with the feeling. But yes, yeah, so this is the this is the weird Solar Fifty. That's amazing. 
And if you just let it hold, like I said, it's just... And it just drones forever? You can drone for days. And you can even, you know, I can take the, let's see, we take the, uh, I have a cable long enough. Let's see, undo one of these guys. We'll put, let's see, anything. Anthony Rother's in the chat. What's up, Anthony? Nice to have you back. We can, you know, plug the modular into this, you know, for any anything that it. takes. There's a CV on it as well. So if you put the CV and then the the uh, the light sensor will be deactivated. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I see. So the Fun control voltage the control voltage takes over the, what the light sensor was doing. Kind Correct. Of? Yeah. Okay. It's a very simple device, but uh, it does. It's like I said, great for winter hibernation droning. I know. I'd it's love to probably, play. Probably play is that. as good as a sun lamp. That and a sun lamp, and I think. Everyone You'll survive the winter. the winter in Berlin. With our whole like lockdown weirdness. Yeah, that's it. So nice. That's beautiful. Um, I'm just curious. So, what would be your typical method for getting a sound from something like this? Like this <clears throat> Solar Fifty is sort of you know you can play it from uh, in a modular system with gates and control voltage and have it do something rhythmic or musical. But if you're just experimenting with it just for sound generation. What would be your typical workflow to capture this into your DAW, and then, like, what would you do with that? Like, like for example, the track I would do now. Yeah. Well, sure. I'd I'd probably just play it without the metronome because mm. if I already, if in this case, like I said, I just got this thing, but something like this is so hard to tune and, and obscure. Yeah. Um, I'd probably just play the track for a bit, feel it out, and just record it on a track without listening to the metronome. So I want to play it kind of by feeling and just kind of like count it out in my head. Maybe you put mm -hmm. a metronome on the side, like a standalone metronome, but not listen okay. to the tracks. So you can just you'd be like da 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 kind of get polyrhythmic about it and then put that in. And somehow I might, which I do a lot in Ableton, is uh, use the complex waveform and stretch things out and pitch them. So I might put something oh, like, okay. if, if it's at 120, I might put it like 180, but double the length and... and All right. uh, well, Detune not to put you by... too much on the spot, but how possible yeah. would it be for you to try that right now? I'm, I'm, I'm giving this is the challenge for today. I can totally try it. The only thing is, I don't have the. Well, actually, the routing is working. Yeah, yeah you just so it's let's... already going into your DAW. So All right, let's see. I, I know this, well, and that is why I'm challenging let's, you. <laughs> let's see if I can still hear it. Yeah. All right, let me go back. We'll do this. I have to All tune right. it back really good. That's a bit sharp. We're not. Oh, you have it off. You have it uh, turned off in your uh, Ableton Live right now. Oh, you don't hear anything. Okay. Yeah. So. So the thing is, if you, you hear go. it, I'm gonna get the latency. So I'm gonna. I just focus on those notes. So I'm gonna. I just want to give the viewers something a yeah. little bit about bridging. You got the, it. The oh, you know, I, I got it between that Let me this crazy co concept instrument. And like what you might do with it in in a structured. Okay, DAW so, all right, all right. So that plays. I won't be able to hear it. I'm gonna have to. Oh, you're just gonna mess without, around. <laughs> I'm gonna do it without without listening to it. That's the only problem. Yeah. All right. So, well, that's okay. Just we, it's experimental. Yeah. We're experimenting. Now. Okay. Do you hear the track still? Yes. Yeah, we got the okay. the, the stuff come from the plugins. Okay. I think it's something out of it. Well, it's nice to do things without hearing them. Why not? You never know. You might do something that you wouldn't do otherwise because you have well, you, you're just randomly accidents. hitting you stuff, right? Well, I know what I tune the notes to, but yeah, it's pretty random at this point. Your next hit. That's right. Or not. So let's see. Let's find out what you've captured right, now and see, see what you can see what do with got. it. Yeah. Cool. Let's see what we got from not listening to it. All right. So we have something, but automatically I'm going to make it cool. I'm going to go to complex. I'm going to go down an octave and I'm going to make it longer. And let's see what we have. I got to give it a little bit of volume. Let me just deuce it up a bit. So. Thank you. 
All right, there's some great out of tune notes. We'll go back to where it was. And we'll put another shimmer on it to kind of cover up that mess. Let's see what we have here. All right, so this is real simply just like time stretching yeah. it. So you're getting the grains yeah. of audio kind of filling in the Correct. space. Yeah, yeah. And then you're going to run this through some different types of plugins to enhance it, right? Yeah, and you, you might the, find the volume that, that... now. We're kind of clipping. Oh, the volume. Okay, sorry. No, about I'm that. good. It's good. I'm on it. <laughs> All right, it's not the coolest thing in the world, but. There, now it sounds a bit more ethereal and less out of tune. So we. I like that little track. I like that little part that is. Where it gets heavy? Yeah, where it gets. It kind of like gives a statement. So I just put that out of one for argument's sake today. So. Uh, and that's another cool part. I'll take that. I will add a new track. And just to have a kind of a lead and a lead outline. Sure. I'll cut this part off. Just volume fade it a bit. And this one too. And we will copy, paste our reverb over there. So now we have a little, just a little something to add reinforcement to the track. So. Sure. This one has Probably to needs to be earlier. tuned a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. It's sharp. It is completely sharp. Actually, just that first little note, because I'm playing so many oscillators. Right. That tuning it's going to sound so super much. weird. There's so much. Just one little bit of this with the reverb is going to fill up a lot of space. Yeah, a little thing. So we'll just take that one little part there for starts, and we'll play it back with that, and that will, will work. Gives it a little reinforcement. Yeah. Makes it a bit more, like, kind of poppy. And we'll take this part. That part would have to be, let's see, we'll do so, a command J. I realize Boop. it's hard Boop. to like be focused and do it exactly right when your your attention is divided. Like here we are live on the stream and like it feels there we go. I know I know the feeling you're having right now. Like if I'm trying to be like oh, artistically creative <laughs> live in front of everybody, it's like uh but you're do you're doing a I'm, really good job at showing us the process, which I really appreciate. Yeah, no, I'm good. It's just really simple to uh you know, once we have, we have this one kind of tune now in, so. Which is kind of a cool little thing. You can just build the whole track off that. We just took those little parts. Yeah. That we took and just added the pads and just wanted to make it something kind of ethereal and I guess typical. We'll make a little loop. But I'm just using my hand. And what are those like kind of pads? I guess yeah, we took the little bass line part and that. Let me just solo that together. Got to reach over. You guys don't see what I see. It's only the other side of the room. Okay. So there. Oh, I like it without the drums. See, that's it. Just like that. Now it sounds something. Now we slowly bought like a sustained string in the high note from the core to the drone. And let's Got make it. this one even like super huge. Bigger. So this could just have like a really light, like low mm -hmm. pass kick in there. You know, some kind of like... Sure. I don't know, some app rack kind of thing. You know, just build it off that. That could be a track too. It doesn't always have to be overly, superly done. So Got it. We bring I in, like how we're we... bridging the gap between, you know, we're first you're you're synthesizing, sound designing, and then moving seamlessly into arranging. Right? Like we're kind of the, and this is always happens, I think, with good electronic music is the synthesis and sound design and composition and arranging are all interlinked and happening together. Yeah, and it's it's crazy how much you can change your ori original idea and change the genre of it, and just it can be a whole, whole different beast at the end. I mean, before when we started did the sound check before tonight, I had just the the drone, uh, this Solar Fifty, and the uh, the modular just droning, and it just sounded sure. like a, the idea from that would have been a whole new vision than what the idea was intended to be. And a lot of times, I would chuck the original idea and go with the instinct, go like, this sounds like some other thing. It's not intentional, but nothing's. It's really the ever happy accident that happens when you <laughs> that's, play that's and, it, and having yeah. fun. This is great. I think yeah, we're so good. I, th I feel like we got to where we wanted to go today. I think uh, you know, we we talked about a lot of stuff. We talked about. We listened to some of your music. We have looked at um, this amazing new gear that you're playing with, which we, I don't we know, broke the ice. Yeah, we, we did. We got there, and this is great. And we have a nice. Uh, here, I'm gonna switch back over to. Uh, to just us. 
Got a nice chat go. going on today. Had a lot of good interaction today. Some nice guests here. Anthony Rother is in the house, which is what up. You're Anthony? always welcome. I'm, I'm, I'd love for you to be on if you're interested. Let's talk about it. And um, that's yeah. why he's sneaking in on the yeah, channel. Right? Anyone good. have anyone have any questions in the chat? I can't yeah, before see the chat we go. now, but uh, <clears throat> like I said, we can do this all day and hours and hours. So if anyone has like another. You know, another request. We can, uh, John. It's a pleasure. We can do this. Like I said, anytime. Yeah, sure. A uh, nice comment just, from Anthony here, say, saying it's always great to see setups from other artists. I I agree. Nice. It's, really, it's nice. And this is not Thank your you, main Anthony. studio either. This is your 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 side home this, setup, right? This is my home. The main studio. We'll do that next time. Like logistically, today it was better to be here um, mm -hmm. for the test run. But the big studio, right. like it's a lot of old analog gear. You guys would love just to see that. So happy to come back and do that. Yeah, sure. Let's do um, that. Yeah, totally. But uh, yeah, just scratching the surface. Lots of stories, but uh, let's just do this again sometime. Absolutely. If anyone else has any specific questions or things they want to ask, or uh, hit me up, hit up John. If you don't make it today, I guess this is forever archived on the interweb. So uh, yeah, it'll be up forever. And then actually, we did have a question about like the music you're working on today. Like this is going to be released under your your own name, right? Like this is yeah, something, this is some or is new, this something? This is what, that you're working on for the for the soundtrack kind of stuff. You know, I want to make new Bill Youngman stuff that's kind of a kind of epic and ethereal, but also has pressure and is techno y. So what I played today, the beats of placeholder. So I, I want okay. it to be like kind of more full and epic and groovy, but not like okay. overly cinematic. But I keep find myself falling back into these, you know, three chord Soundscapes. structures with simple counterpart bass lines because it's enjoyable it's enjoyable to listen to so well you could take you know, this you could work it out as kind of a more listening oriented thing or a soundtrack thing or whatever absolutely. and then do another version of it that's like wonky sure. techno version or something like you can you know I, I like doing that myself like i'll make a track and it'll be whatever i'm feeling in that moment but it has musical ideas that i could then take and reimagine as it's like remixing yourself it kind of takes the pressure off a little bit too. It does, and I don't think for you know all you guys out there, you know, you know, no pressure ever. Just, just make it and see what happens. See how you feel. And Here's we all another... get stuck in the loop forever. Yeah. So <laughs> exactly. Here's another uh, uh, good question here. How long do you work on tracks usually? Like, what what does it take to go from this point that you're at to completion? Oh, it, it really all depends. Something like this idea, probably like a good day to figure out what key I want the track to be in and going mm -hmm. back and forth with the parts. But once I have a chord pro progression I like, like with the wonky stuff, just to rewind, um, with the wonky stuff, that shit went really quick because it was sure. like, you have the idea, you go, that sounds cool. We need another part, another part, and you just go sequence to sequence in your MPC or whatever you had. The gear was a limitation of that. But mm -hmm. with the computer, the thing is the computer can go back and forth, back and forth right. all the time. So it's a bit of a danger there like, when you're in the box because you can save it and go back to it and come forever, right? Like you can yeah, just keep working is, on it and working on it. Yeah, you know, this is why in the computer I will freeze and flatten the tracks, like bounce them in places audio so there's no return. If I like the idea enough, to it. I will paste it in time so I can't go back in the plugin and re automate stuff because then you're just gonna be there for months and months. But um I'd say a track like this, this is a sketch, probably took about less than a day to sketch, maybe a few hours, because it's just a drum, there's a snare, there's a hi hat, mm -hmm. there's a bass line, there's a pad. To make it beautiful, and this track would have like some chord inversions and some other sound design texture, I can easily f finish it in a few more hours. Okay. But to make something that I'm really happy with, it usually takes like on and off, like about a month. On and off of right. going back, because I'm, I'm not working on the same track. I work on it, I get bored, I come back to it a week later, you know, because when you're sitting there in the loop, you're like, oh, I'm so bored of this. So if you leave it, if you walk away from it for a little bit and come back and it's already a good track and you love it, then you'll want to work on it again. That's how I work. I get, I have ADD. I just get really bored really I quick. I so feeling. I, I the, would say. If the idea is not there right away, then I, I'm like, uh, this sucks and I'll delete it and I'll be like, oh, that was pretty good. It's in my head and now I deleted the file. So. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I try not to do that to myself to like delete stuff if I don't like it because I might like it again another day. And then I would say as far as timing, you get a lot of I I feel like you get a lot of the like the bulk of it done in a, in a short amount of time. But it's the refinement that takes longer. Yeah, the small sound design, yeah. the mixing, like in the, the thing perfection. with like, yeah, the thing with electronic music is a lot of the sound is actually in the way it's put together, not like 
in the nuances in the mix that make it special for the artists themselves. And I, I as you, I mix everything myself and do all my own sound mm -hmm. design. So those things give it the sound on a whole. So if the idea is there and it's just sketched and it hasn't been worked out from like the mixing standpoint, it won't have the same feeling, you know? True. So uh, until that's done, that getting that feeling right, that kind of like that one little bit in the pocket where it just feels like that feels good and groovy and funky, you know, or whatever it's supposed to be. That's the thing that takes hours and hours and, you know, if, years of practice. But although there are exceptions, sometimes you, you're you lucky and you get it from the beginning oh, and then your job is absolutely. not to mess it up. <laughs> absolutely. Then don't touch it. Then leave it, right. bounce it out and let your friends hear it. You know, always let friends hear stuff who are musicians, who are non-musicians, mm -hmm. your parents, your kids, everyone. Let them listen to it and see their reaction. And if a track's good, everyone's going to react like being like, oh, this is not my thing, but I feel I can see why people would like this. Then you're like, all right, it's a good track. Thanks, got mom, another, or whatever. So <laughs> got another question from Dave here. When is a track done for you? When do you stop playing with it and say, yep, that's done? You know what, you Dave? Know? It's, uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, when there's like a delay tail at the end, it just fades <laughs> out. The when, the, when, when the last beat kind of fades away into, into the space, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's intuition. It's instinct for each known. Um, I feel like nowadays. I, think, I just limit myself. I limit myself yeah. to go like, hey, I've worked on this for this many hours. It's, it's got to be done. good now. enough. I'll put it in a folder. And so check this out, Dave. I'll put it in a folder with that with a ton of other things. But then I will go play them. I wasn't kidding. Like for friends and family, musicians, non-musicians go like, hey, check out my stuff. And this is like something that Andrew Sheps does. If you guys know Andrew Sheps, world-class mixing engineer. Metallic and all that. He said, like, whenever you give someone a mix, just say, here it is. Don't say anything. Don't say, like, it's not done. It's rough. It's an idea. Just when you play something to someone, just give it to them as it is. Because if they come back and say, like, oh, it sounds kind of unpolished and you knew that, then next time, polish it up a bit more, then give it to them. But, uh, you know, you'll always get an honest response if you just give someone the thing in its most rawest format. Right. Um, but, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, when is it done? When is Live it done? society you know when you, says it's done when you're sick of it. That's yeah. That's <laughs> that's a good time to be done with it too. Live society. Right. Like, yeah, I can't hear it anymore. Like, I'm done with this. It's finished. And then you go have a couple beers with your pals. You put that track on that you hated, and they're like, "This is the best one from you." You know, it's just it happens. It's always subjective. It yeah, could also totally. be if you're lucky enough to have a label interested in putting your stuff out. It the debt. It, it's done when you have to meet the deadline. Like, you know, like that for me that's, now. Like. Everything I do isn't finished until I've sent a pre-master to somebody for release. Like up okay. until that yeah. moment, it's where that's where I'm fully like, okay, it's done because, you know, like it has to be done. Like there's a label or a distribution deadline or, you know, they're waiting. They need the part stems from you so people can do a remix of it. So you have to finish your arrangement so you can give the parts to the people doing the remix. So it's more like practical limits. If you don't have those though, if you're still just sort of working on your own, you have to impose those limits on yourself. Or else, yeah, I'm working on my own, so I'm like, I'm, yeah. it's done when it's, yeah, it's when it feels when it's done, good, when it feels right. But then you, but you're still sick of it, but <laughs> right. <laughs> at it's least fine. you feel like it's in the it's in the bag. But uh, yeah, cool, nice. So I think let's wrap it up. This has been great. We went a little bit past two, which I thought we might do because I knew it would be fun to hang out and talk. So like I said, thanks. We can do this all day. We'll do it again another time. We could, but you know, we got we got. Our own other life things we have to do. We got our families. People have got things our to do. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's dinner and lunchtime and breakfast and beer o'clock somewhere in the world. So uh, It is absolutely beer o'clock for me. Actually, it's a little early now. It's more like lunchtime for me. I'll I've think about beer o'clock later. Using the glass to look civilized. Nice. Beautiful. Thanks it's once again, here. Bill. Evening this in Berlin. awesome. It's always nice to hang out with you. Um, John, it's, it's a pleasure. Um, I can't wait to see you back in New York very soon on the next trip that's right come back we'll hang out person. We'll, we'll, we'll go get we'll go get a get lunch and have a couple of beers or something like that so thanks we to everybody will. and for for tuning in yeah, today thank you guys yeah, every, everyone to, who tuned in comments i'll check later and uh i hope oh, yeah, this was definitely. uh and this is enjoyable. forever <laughs> hope it was enjoyable totally. this is our lives just do what you do do what you love work hard at it enjoy your passions be nice to other people and that's it and make some music make some noise and i'll see you guys next time <laughs> Thanks for doing such a great ending to my show. That's perfect. I'm not going to have nothing else to say. Exactly what, what Bill just said. That's what, that's what I feel right now. 
<laughs> I'm gonna have you on my show. Now you show me how to do it. I'm gonna have my show. Sometime. No, I want to see that. I want. Maybe I'll have you on no, as I'm a good. guest host. You could do it. You could. You could do my show one Saturday if I can't. I'm serious. Maybe we can do it like a three <laughs> thing. We'll get like some other, you know, someone else. <laughs> That's no, that's another thing. I, I, my first year I was doing this, I did a lot of uh, multiple guests. I did like two or three people and we just hang out and chat. So we could do that again with some of our mutual friends for sure. Chat and we could do a mutual jam at some point too. That'd be fun too as well. Oh, right. Yeah. We got to, I need to, exp I want to explore that again. The, the network uh, jamming thing. We could, tr we, I'm we should in, try I'm that. I'm into that. All right. For reals. I won't, I won't just drone over your stuff. <laughs> no, I'll drone over your stuff. Who's doing that loud drone? Who has the mixer? Anyways, all right. Thank you guys so much, John. Biggest heart to you and oh, my friends sweet. who tune in and everyone new and new and old, and uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome. Have a good it's one, guys. Awesome. See you next time. Adios. All right. See you guys. See you, John.